Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, was it really that much of a surprise that we were going to have ads out the yin yang on YGO organization as I try to film? And was it really much of a surprise that we were going to get maxi number three? Guys, smash the ever living boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate all of the support. Let's just dive right on into it because, um, we, we got some stuff to talk about here. So this is Mul Charmy Ni Nihilus. Uh, beast effect earth level for 100 attacks, 600 defense. Of course, it has the standard effect. You can only activate one other Mul Charmy monster effect the turn you activate this effect. And it's got the standard during the end phase shuffle cards. The opponent controls plus six, blah, 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 blah. It's got that standard Mul Charmy effect. The first effect is what's different. If you control no cards quick effect, you can discard this card. Apply these effects this turn. Each time your opponent special summons a monster, monsters from the graveyard and or banishment immediately draw one card. Now, a lot of people are thinking that we are going to get some sort of strato searcher to search one of these monsters. Kind of like how Retaliating C back in the day could search you, Max C, because Retaliating C has that searching effect when it goes to grave. Um... I don't know if we're really going to get that. The, the, I'm not even upset about this new Mole Charmy because this new Mole Charmy is very specific, right? Like, they have to summon from Graveyard or Banishment, and then you draw one, and you can only activate one of the Mole Charmy. So you're at most activating two a turn if you open up two of them, right? Uh, or two of the same name. Um, so this doesn't bother me as much as Fualos does and the price tag that Fualos has. But obviously, Nihilus is going to be a secret rare. But it's not game breaking like I feel like Fualos is. But the power creep in Yu Gi Oh! is just so out of control. And I feel like we're really getting to a point where we're going to be like the OCG, where they had at a time nine Maxis because they had three Maxi, three Perulia, three Fualos. They started main decking Floodgates because if they got Max Seed or something, then they could at least sit on a Floodgate and wait till their next turn. And. It really makes me not enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! If that's like where we're going. Because keep in mind, if you look at it from my perspective, being here in Florida, uh, there's no more regionals for me, right? Like there's one on the 20th. I'm not going. I can't make it. Um, I don't want to go anyway because it's like five to six hours away. And so I'm basically just sitting here preparing for the YCS in Orlando, but that's not until February. And now that we're seeing what's coming out in Maze of the Master, which is doesn't come out to like February 11th, which is after the YCS, so we're not going to have access to cards like Seventh Tachyon, which make Rizal much better. Even though Rizal is still going to be good, it's not going to be as good without Seventh Tachyon, I feel. Uh, and then on top of that, now we're getting the reveals with Supreme Darkness. Of course, we're getting a new Mulch Army. And like, it, I'm speechless, honestly, because... I don't know if it's just I'm burnt out with the game or whatever the case may be, because keep in mind I have been playing this game uh, over 10 years, 16 years to be exact, 17 uh, this December, but I just don't like the direction of this card design and how crazy power creep has gotten that we have you know, things like Max C in the game again in the form of Fualos and Perulia. Now we're going to have Nihilus. And then it, it's it's still going to be just different tier one decks because remember, we're getting new Azamina support in this set. And then uh, the GB stuff is cool, but Gladiator Beast is still garbage. The new Arcana Force support's cool. The deck is still absolute garbage because I, I really want to play that deck for the YCS. And I tried messing around with it and it's just dog water. And so... You're, you're left in a position where I don't even know if when we get our next ban list, which probably won't even be till like January, to be honest, like probably like January 1st of 2025, like they did um, January 1st of 2024, they gave us a list. I don't know if that's really going to fix much of anything because it's going to have to be a big list that changes a lot of things. Like you bell, tempi, and snake eyes slash snake eye as Amina need to be hit because of course snake eyes fucking tier one again. And I'm kind of left here just like waiting it out like what's gonna happen now like uh, there's not much to really look forward to in supreme darkness like yeah if you like heroes you can play heroes but like the deck still just kind of loses to nib like you're still hoping to end on like favorite contact and stuff and it's it doesn't make me excited at all for Supreme Darkness. I think price tag wise, I think Supreme Darkness is going to be a lot better price wise compared to Rage of the Abyss. Like, I don't think that Nihilus is going to be 
30 to, to 140 dollar card it's good but it's not all that great you know it's very format dependent right now we don't have a lot of decks summoning from the graveyard you know yeah flamberge is going to summon out two bodies that's going to get you a draw when you use promethean princess to summon a monster back that's going to get you a draw but we don't know you know what our next list what our next balance is going to look like until we get supreme darkness most likely like i don't think we're going into january of the new year in this current list i think we're going to get a fresh list come january at the earliest december um but i mean outside of that there's there's not much else to really look forward to when it comes to that, especially if you're in a position like me where I feel like I'm living in Europe because I don't have any events to look forward to. And yeah, you can make the argument, even with like Quarter Century Bonanza, having a bunch of uh, retro cards like Morphe Jar, Magician of Fate, Drac, Waiba, Sangin, whatever, um, that it's just time to start playing you know, retro formats for a few months. I don't even know if I even want to do that. Like, I, I want to make content. Like, I really want to focus on making good content for you. Um, but trying to like convince myself to buy a case of supreme darkness feels like that is just not ever going to happen but you know maybe the new mole charmings that they put out if they're going to put out any more you know in the next core set whatever the case may be maybe you know it'll be a searcher but like you can't activate that mole charming you search that turn um, something that I do think is interesting though, and this is kind of something I've been rolling around in the back of my head, is what if you played an Exodia deck with like all the mulch armies? And like if your opponent starts summoning monsters, you're just going to draw a bunch of cards and eventually draw Exodia. I think that that's a really interesting idea. Like I could see a mulch army Exodia deck absolutely being a thing where, you know, if you go second, you just play out your mulch armies, and if you go first, you know, you have either the fusion to sit on, or you've got some sort of backup engine, because, I mean, I just don't think you can play Exodia really as a stall deck, because Break the Seal is really not all that good. But, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What are you doing right now with Yu-Gi-Oh? Are, are you even excited for a max C number fucking three, or are you just playing retro formats? What is it that you're doing during what I feel like is a downtime, even though we just got a new ban list. Guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.